Welcome to Chancellor University's educational series. Uh, this is the second part of a talk on motives and motivations and organizational behavior. Uh, in this segment, we're going to focus particularly on uh, the motives and motivations and how they translate into leadership styles. So in part one, we, we showed that motives and motivations are the, the main driver of our behavior, both inside organizations and actually in our private life. Uh, motives and motivations uh, have been uh, studied for about 100 years, maybe 200 years, and there's a great um, set of study from a man named David McClellan out of Harvard University, and he organized motives and motivations into three categories that help the rest of the world really come to grips with uh, how do we understand ourselves, our motives, and then what do we do about those. Those three uh, categorizations are high need for achievement, so many people are motivated by the need for achievement. The need for achievement is the, really the focus on results. Uh, if you're the sort of person who uh, keeps a checklist, who uh, has lots of sticky notes on your computer at home, if you uh, uh, judge success of a day by how much you get done on the weekend, uh, that's uh, evidence of a results person. Results people really like to keep score. They're really important uh, about money. Uh, those types of things. So high need for achievement is one category of motives and motivations. A second category is high need for affiliation. People with a high need for affiliation, and they're equal in number uh, uh, as of achievement people, affiliation people love relationship. And this is relationship for just relationship's sake. So there's no uh, ulterior motive. It's that they, they really enjoy connecting with people, getting to know people, having lifelong friendships, those sorts of things. Um, that's high need for affiliation. And a third category of uh, motives and motivations are people with a high need for power. Uh, these are the people uh, who really love to have influence over others. So they enjoy learning about topics and being kind of an expert in the room on certain topics. Uh, these are professors. That's a typical category. Politicians. People with a high need for power love to have knowledge and use that knowledge, but there isn't a high drive to really do anything with that knowledge. So it's kind of an interesting dichotomy when you start to think about these motives and motivations together. Now we all have all of these, so uh, we'll all have a profile, uh, but there are um, uh, dominant styles. So each of us has one of these that's dominant, that really takes over kind of who we are. And what's important um, from a motives and motivation standpoint in organizations or in business is that these motives translate into leadership styles. So the style of a leader. And, it's, and, and they line up perfectly with the different categorizations of motives and motivations. So a high need for achievement person who focuses on results, they'll typically have a, a leadership style of telling others what to do. So they're very directive, very coercive. It is, here's what I want you to do, do it now. And we call that a telling style. Uh, a secondary style from a results-oriented leader, so a, a person with high need for achievement, is they do it themselves. So these are the type of leaders who, they'll get frustrated with you. If you're not doing it fast enough, they'll just do it themselves. The high need for affiliation, kind of a relationship building leadership style, is just what you'd expect, right? These are the people who will build relationships. The relationships become more important than the results. Because these are the people who really believe that it's in relationship that you get the results. So their leadership styles take on the focus of relationship building. And then naturally, these are great teamers. So if you have a very complex organization uh, and you need a lot of complex teaming, you really want to look for people who have a natural need for relationship building, a natural need for affiliation. And then the third leadership style group is the high need for power. These are the people who love to have influence over others. Uh, they like to be the expert in the room. These people are wonderful at selling a vision. So their leadership style will be, here's where we're going. This is going to be great. Stay with me. You know, things are tough. It's going to get better if we get over this hump. So it's very much about the future. It's about selling people on the vision. This is what the best politicians do. They're really great at seeing what things are beyond the problems. So it's a selling of a vision style and or a coaching style. So these are coaches as if they're sports coaches. So a person with a high need for power from a motive standpoint, they take on the role of a coach where it is, it's, it's their true desire to make you more effective. They feel best when they're helping you be great. So that's a wonderful leadership style. So again, we'll have a dominant uh, motive profile, 
So these leadership styles become uh, dominant, one or the other. And as you can imagine, in different business situations, different styles actually are more important and, and uh, actually needed more. And that's where the, the work on leadership development for the 21st century is really starting to take off. Uh, what more and more organizations are seeing is that the role of a leader in the 21st century is to create the best environment so that your people can do their best work. That is really important. So no longer are leaders the best person for that department or that function. They're the best at creating environments where their people can do great work. And you really can't do that. You can't determine what people need, how to create great environments, until you understand organizational behavior, organizational development. So I have a little uh, graph here. This comes from Harvard University, David McClellan. And it really shows the major functions that happen in an organization. And this is uh, illustrative of how things have changed. So there's a whole set of work uh, around what to do in an organization. The strategy department, figuring out what. Uh, the strategy, the finances, all of that. So there's strategy component, and then there's an execution component. Execution takes people. It takes your process, your org design. It takes the measurements, the finance people. Uh, it also, though, takes leadership, and it creates environment. And what more and more organizations are finding is that um, up until about the 1990s, the whole focus on organizational effectiveness was around strategy, aligning your people to strategy, creating a great organization, um, and processes that were efficient, measuring those processes continually. That's the TQM, the Six Sigma, the Lean Manufacturing, and that's what creates results, financial results. This is money. And, um, uh, most organizations put most of their emphasis on that. What organizations like IBM, GE, and others have found is that that is still important, but that's only about 60% of where results come from. What more and more organizations are finding is that the leaders that you choose and the leadership styles that people use, the environments that they create, the climate, the culture, uh, that aspect of organizations is really where about 40% of the difference from one organization's results versus another. So this is becoming more and more important. That's why you're seeing a lot more emphasis on embrace who you are as a leader. Uh, the, uh, again, the whole idea is that the leadership now is very different, the requirement of what it was in the past. And more and more has to do with creating this environment of high performance. You have to know yourself. You have to be able to motivate others. You can only do that with knowledge of organizational behavior, organizational development. It's a wonderful discipline. I think you'll love it if this is what really kind of motivates you. Uh, you can learn much more at Chancellor University on our websites through more of these lessons online. Uh, please join us in our programs. Uh, the, this type of material and more like it would be in our specializations like international business, leadership, change management, and uh, HR. And um, so I hope to see you online. Let's talk to you soon.